long before humanity builds cities, cultivates fields, and develops complex cultures, the Earth is barely recognizable. No roads cut through the landscape, no villages or trading hubs marks the continents. Only untouched nature, free from the traces of human civilization. In the late Cretaceous, around 68 million years ago, the climate in North America is warm, almost tropical. The West is covered with lush forests, rivers and plains, populated by ferns and towering conifers. Daily life in this world is dominated by impressive creatures, such as the Triceratops. Up to 9 meters long and weighing as much as 10 tons, it is a formidable herbivore, combining strength and size. It clearly shows that dinosaurs at this time are at the peak of their evolution. Perfectly adapted, powerful and impossible to overlook in their environment. Yet they are also aware of the dangers this world holds. In herds, they find mutual protection, like this group of Edmontosaurs. Despite their impressive size, they can become prey at any moment. In the Cretaceous, paradise on Earth is ruled by the strongest, and only those who combine strength, skill and vigilance can survive. Once upon a time, the two Tyrannosaurus rexes were the only survivors of their brood. Even fearsome creatures like them were at the mercy of the unforgiving world of the Cretaceous period when they were newborns. Severe storms and other dangers threatened the young predators, yet their harsh fate only served to bind the small family even closer together. As juveniles, the brothers were merely miniature versions of themselves. It took some time for Vargan and Ragnar to grow into the apex predators for which they would become world famous millions of years later. When they themselves were too small to hunt, measuring just under a meter in length and weighing only a few kilos, they watched their mother. Eager to learn, they absorbed everything their role model taught them. How to stalk, lie in wait, and finally seize the right moment to strike. In their play, the young predators mimicked hunting, gradually building muscle memory for the real thing. For they knew early on that their mother would not provide food forever. Even after many years, Vargan and Ragnar are still inseparable. Together, they have survived the most difficult times and still have no intention of letting the harsh everyday life of the Cretaceous period get them down. Vargan's hungry stomach is like a wake-up call for the predator. By now, Vargan and Ragnar have gained several tons, spread across a body length of 12 meters, and such mass needs to be fed.
The brothers warm up together. What the Tyrannosaurs lack in their arms, they make up for in their legs. While their forelimbs grow to only about a meter, their legs support their entire body weight, and it shows. The long thighs are equipped with massive muscles, providing the thrust needed to set the enormous predators in motion. Wagen can wait no longer. His craving for fresh meat is too great. So he sets out alone, seeking an adequate solution to the problem. Ragnar knows his brother well and understands that he cannot be stopped. And so he lets him go. Among 50-meter-tall cypresses and giant sequoias, the hungry Tyrannosaurus makes his way, senses alert. The first flowering plants attract insects, whose buzzing weaves a gentle undertone into the scene. The moss-covered ground muffles Vargan's massive feet. Each of his three toes ends in powerful claws, providing him with grip on the rugged terrain. He carefully senses every scent, damp soil, resin, wet leaves. But suddenly, Vargan thinks he detects a metallic undertone. Blood. In the distance, a deep roar echoes through the forest, a battle between two dinosaurs, exactly the opportunity Vargan has been waiting for. Even the victor of this fight will be exhausted, and for a skilled hunter like him, that means easy prey. Soon, he finds the source of the trail. Two Triceratops bulls have come to blows. The massive creatures face each other, the ground trembling beneath their feet with every step. Their powerful skulls each bear three sharp horns, acting like natural spears. It is a test of strength, a game of dominance, not a serious fight to the death. Occasionally, they push each other aside, stomp the ground, and their tails whip uncontrollably through the air. After a few moments, with neither gaining the upper hand, the two bulls turn away from each other. They have had enough. With deliberate, heavy steps, they move on through the dense undergrowth, their horns still slightly threatening, but the conflict is over. Each bull goes its own way. Adrenaline surges through Vargan. The mere sight of this fight has made him hungrier, and he is certain he could take down one of the Triceratops. Slowly and carefully, he follows one of the bulls for several minutes, studying its movements and assessing its condition.
Vargan's muscles tense like cords on the verge of snapping. His hunger, his greed, soon leave him with no choice. With a sudden surge, he charges forward, dust swirling beneath his feet, the ground trembling. But the Triceratops bull does not hesitate. It instantly switches to defense. With a furious roar, it swings its head, its massive horns like a wall of bone and keratin. At first, Vargan manages to land a few blows on the flank of the sturdy herbivore, but then he repeatedly crashes against the massive neck shield and loses his balance. The Triceratops follows up with its horns and headbutts, pushing Vargan further and further back. With a bone-shaking roar, the bull threatens the young Tyrannosaurus. The two adversaries lock eyes for a moment longer, Vargan's flanks heave heavily, adrenaline and hunger battling against pain and exhaustion. Yet the Triceratops stands firm, wounded but unyielding. Finally, Vargan retreats, growling and hissing, his gaze full of frustration. He has overestimated himself and must now face the consequences. Exhausted and wounded, he makes his way back to his brother. Wounded and humiliated, Vargan returns to the watering hole, where Ragnar is already waiting. His gaze is stern, almost reproachful. He knows his brother's reckless nature all too well. Too often, Vargan lets hunger and audacity guide him, making thoughtless decisions. Yet they are inseparable, bound by blood. And so Ragnar, the stronger of the two, resolves to stand by his brother once again. After hours of roaming the land, Ragnar comes to a halt. He finally senses the opportunity they have been waiting for all day. Ragnar's instincts do not fail him. A herd of Edmontosaurs is resting by the riverbank. Normally, they would pose a dangerous challenge but the onset of rain, the twilight, and the combined strength of the two brothers turn the situation into their opportunity. In the cover of twilight, 
Ragnar and Vargan creep closer to the small herd. Silently, they place their massive feet on the soft, rain-soaked ground. Their enormous silhouettes blend with the shadows of the trees, while their gaze remains fixed unwaveringly on the Edmontosaurs. A deep rumble in the distance drowns out the steady patter of rain. The brothers use every sound to mask their approach. At the riverbank, the Edmontosaurs huddle closer together. They cannot yet see the danger, but they seem to sense the impending threat on some subtle level. Ragnar lowers his head, his eyes glinting in the approaching dusk. Vargan follows close behind, two hunters, silent and purposeful, side by side. A bright flash tears across the sky, and at the same moment Ragnar bursts from cover. With thundering steps, he lunges at the herd. Ragnar cannot be restrained. A precise bite, a jerk of his massive skull, and the first herbivore collapses to the ground. Panic erupts. The Edmontosaurs screech into the night, water splashing as they try to flee the riverbank. But Ragnar is faster. In the blink of an eye, he turns to the next victim, driven by a bloodlust that overrides all reason. Vargan, on the other hand, plays a different role. With quick, precise movements, he practically corrals the herd, cutting off the escape routes and driving them back into Ragnar's reach. In a fraction of a second, his up to 30 centimeter long serrated teeth sink deep into the prey's flesh. Like bone daggers, they tear out chunks as blood and rain merge in the pale light of twilight. Side by side, Ragnar and Vargan conquer the night. Two brothers, bound by blood and their shared history, unshakable in the face of any danger. In a world defined by harshness and impermanence, they have only the certainty of their bond. For whatever may come, they stand together. Two brothers, united by a common fate. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and drop a comment. It really helps a lot. Don't forget to check out the previous episodes as well to explore more of our stories. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.